Hey guys, today we're going to be doing our first community spotlight video. This is where I'm going to be showing off some services that I think can be really useful to the community. Today we're going to be going over a few different services to help you keep all of your servers and Docker containers up to date. So the first thing I'm going to be showing you today is this awesome Docker container called Watchtower. It hasn't been updated in a while, but it still works great, and it's still pretty popular. It's got over a billion pulls on Docker Hub. If you head over to Docker Hub and search for Watchtower, it'll be the first container that pops up. And it's really easy to get set up. And what it's going to do is it's going to connect to the uh, Docker socket, and it's just going to keep all of your Docker containers up to date by pulling the latest images and restarting them. Installation is really easy. All you do is you go into Portainer, you click on Add Container. We're going to call it Watchtower. And then for the image, you're just going to put in v2 tech slash watchtower. And then under volumes, we're just going to do a bind mount for slash var docker dot sock. So select bind, and it's going to be the same in both entries. And then you just click on deploy. And after a few minutes, you'll see watchtower start updating your other Docker containers if there are any updates available. One thing to keep in mind is that it's going to automatically update them to the latest version. So if there are any breaking changes or anything like that, you're going to have to go in and fix the containers, or you're going to have to disable Watchtower and pull the old version until you can figure out how to get the new version to work correctly. So the next thing we're going to go over is keeping your Ubuntu and Debian virtual machines up to date. So by default, Ubuntu comes installed with this package called Unattended Upgrades. For Debian, you can install it with an easy one-liner. It's just sudo apt install unattended-upgrades. And all you're going to do to enable this, since it's deactivated by default, is sudo dpackage reconfigure unattended upgrades. Hit enter, type in your sudo password. And it'll pull up a nice curses prompt here and have you select yes to enable the automatic updates. So now your server will automatically update to latest versions of all the packages that are available for it as long as they're marked as stable. So the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is this cool tool called Cockpit. What this does is it gives you a nice management interface that you can use to connect to all of your servers and manage a whole bunch of stuff across your entire home lab. Uh, I only have it set up on my Portainer VM here, but I'm going to show you how to install this and hook it up to multiple servers so you can manage all of your home lab servers from one panel. So the install is super easy on Ubuntu and Debian. You're just going to install it from the default repos. So we're going to install a couple extra tools. We're going to install Cockpit. We're going to install Cockpit-PackageKit, which is going to let us actually upgrade our packages. Cockpit-Docker to manage our Docker containers and Cockpit-Machines. All right, and there's one more thing we need to do on this machine before we can get started because I want to be accessing this through a reverse proxy, which by default it's not going to allow. Uh, so we just need to nano slash etsy slash cockpit slash cockpit.conf. I'm just going to edit that. And we're just going to paste in this little thing right here. It's going to be web service and then origins equal HTTPS colon double slash your domain name or WSS colon double slash your domain name. And then we're also going to need this protocol equals X forward proto. And this is something we're going to be setting in the reverse proxy. So all you have to do is make sure that your proxy passes through proxy set header X forwarded proto uh, and have that be a variable that tells it whether it's HTTP or HTTPS because it wants to make sure that it's only connecting on HTTPS. In your Nginx reverse proxy, you're going to want to paste in something like this. And this is the line directly from Nginx reverse proxy manager. And then we're going to restart cockpit.
And now we'll go to the IP address of that server at port 9090 and see if cockpit is up. All right, so instead of going to the IP address of that virtual machine in a browser, I went ahead and used the domain name that I had set up for it that I'm reverse proxying because if you try to go to just the IP address when you have it set up for reverse proxying, it's not going to work after you log in. So now we'll just log in and take a look at the interface. All right, so this is the interface that you're going to see when you log in to Cockpit. It's really nice. We have just a complete overview of our system here. You can even join a domain here if you install Realm D, which is a really nice feature to have. And you can restart the machine or shut it down from here, too. You have logs. You can view all of your storage stats and see how much space you're taking up, how much you have left. Networking is not going to work by default with Ubuntu or Debian just because they use a different network manager than Red Hat does. Uh, you can always switch them over to that if you really want them to be usable with Cockpit. If we hop into containers, we can see the Docker containers that are running on this, which is our Nginx Reverse Proxy Manager and Watchtower, which we just set up, as well as Portainer. And you can see all of the images that we have here, as well as pull new ones. Uh, you'd be able to see virtual machines here. This is that cockpit-machines package that we installed earlier. Uh, there's currently no virtual machines on this, and this itself is running inside of a virtual machine, so we're not going to really be able to do anything with that. You can view the accounts that are set up on your server. You can get a list of all of the services that are running on your server as well as if you go into them you can stop or disable or enable them which is great this applications feature isn't really implemented yet you can click on refresh and see what they have here i believe last time i checked it was just some test applications here is where we're going to see our software updates it's currently initializing and here is where we can access a terminal. This is a shell directly into the VM, which is really nice. And you can see software updates. We're fully up to date on this machine, but we'll go ahead and add another machine that's not up to date. So that way we can see how this functions. To do that, we're gonna go over to this dashboard, which is super nice. And I'm gonna pick another server to connect to. But before we connect, we're going to generate an SSH key on this server and use that to authenticate against our other servers. So we're going to just type in ssh-keygen and hit enter. You can leave all the defaults, set a passphrase if you want to. And then we're going to ssh-copy-id. And we're going to do root. I'm going to do the open media vault machine that we had set up in a previous tutorial, which is going to be 10.0.100. 83. Yes, and then type in the password. And when we go into this dashboard, we can hit add server. We're going to do 10.0.100.83. Click on add. And we're going to use available credentials. We're going to do root. And we're going to log in. Oh, it's not installed. So first, we have to install Cockpit on this other machine. And now we're going to click on Add Server, 10.0.100.83. User, we're going to do root, and we're going to use that SSH key for authentication. And here we have the host name for that machine, and we can go into it, and we can see, oh, there's the message of the day. We can see our logs, see our accounts, see our services, and we can see a terminal. And here we can cockpit dash package kit and cockpit dash storage D. I'm going to install both of these packages that way we can get these in our web interface to manage and we will just refresh
and we can check out storage. So here we can actually see our file share right here. And it'll also show you storage logs, uh, which is really nice to have. We can click on software updates. So what this is going to do is it's going to do an apt update and it's going to give you a list of all the updates that you have available. So we'll just give it a moment here. We can see up oh, here's a security update and we'll click on install security updates. You can view the log while it's going as well. Uh, and you can just ignore this restart. And we'll show the system's up to date and it shows you a nice history of the stuff that you've updated. So that is basically Cockpit. Uh, there's probably some more features in here that I'm skipping over and I can go a little bit more in depth in the future uh, if you guys want a video on that. But I just wanted to show you guys a few easy utilities for keeping all of your servers uh, and containers up to date. <music>